a slightly different perspective at this session. It's probably the development of innovation as led out through an acquisition strategy. Uh, and therefore we're uh, probably slightly different than the last one, but I hope uh, nonetheless relevant to, to the team of today. So in two parts, uh, I hope to talk to you about a uh, little bit about the Glandia backdrop. Some of you may be fed up hearing that, but you'll have to listen to it again. And, uh, but also maybe learn a little that you didn't know already, hopefully. And then the second bit, how we have evolved uh, part of the business into Tom as an infant nutrition and for us is specialist adult nutrition in sports nutrition and how that has come about and therefore what that's driving in terms of innovation, particularly uh, around marketing. And that works. Uh, so, um, the focus, and we, you know, there's a big dairy business here in Ireland, but growth as far as Glanbia PLC has con been concerned has been about international nutritional solutions and a cheese group. And the nutritional solutions, particularly driven off uh, whey uh, as a result of our large global cheese making business, but also some non dairy elements as well. The market cap of the business currently is about 1.4 billion, the revenue is 2.6 billion last year. In, including our share of the joint ventures. And part of the evolution of the group and part of the contribution of innovation and diversification has been to get the margins up in this business. And last year we came to 7% EBITDA uh, margins, which was a significant milestone uh, along the development road. Uh, the, the positions are in Dairy Ireland, where we have the three businesses, uh, Glanbia Ingredients, uh, currently working and undertaking a significant program of work about planning for the, the significant development that there will be in the Glanbia region of milk output. And we welcome that challenge, which will be serious, but also the opportunity it presents to, a lot of, to all our stakeholders. U.S. cheese, where we produce 20% of U.S. cheddar cheese output, uh, are about 380,000 tonnes in the U.S. And then the nutritionals business, which is broken down into a whey solutions business, uh, which is taking whey from the cheese and converting it into customer-solving products for customers. Micronutrients is non-dairy. It's a vitamin and mineral blending business. So uh, we have four plants, two in the States, one in Germany and one in China. And we service the beverage business, people like the cereals business, uh, infant nutrition and the uh, supplement industry. And then performance nutrition is a key that I'll go into in some detail was an old-fashioned vertical integration out of whey solutions into personal um, specialist adult nutrition. Uh, in terms of the vision and the strategy, I suppose the key point in, in growth has been that we're organized around models that are aligned together. So we have the Irish-based business and we have the global nutritionals business. Uh, and the focus has been an organic and acquisition expansion. And acquisition has taken us into new fields and therefore led out new approaches uh, to innovation. Uh, I don't discount the organic. Our cheese business has been largely built on new builds that we, we, I believe we've executed well in, in the US to get to that position and elsewhere. A couple of the strategic priorities in this phase of the journey of the group have been to really get close to key customers uh, the, 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 the downside or the challenge in that is you become to get close to a number of fewer, larger, big global customers. And that's a challenge to manage, but it's also, uh, I think, rewarding. And then we have had to adapt uh, science-based innovation, but also that it's a good, a useful mix, and I can empathize with Veo's last comment, the mix of market, science, and technology. I used to meet these earnest young graduates in London in investment houses who would ask me, how big is the whey business? I say, I don't know. You know, it's question number four, market share. I don't know. What I'm interested in doing is developing applications for whey in a variety of food uses on a global basis. And therefore, that has to be built on science. And our indicators have been about driving up the margin and getting to double-digit uh, earnings growth measured in EPS terms. Today we have, this is the global footprint, uh, we have manufacturing in seven countries and sales and technical support in 14 countries and sales and distribution in 130. Obviously we have uh, three scale cheese operations in the United States, 
It's also the headquarters of our sports nutrition business. Uh, and plants include China, Nigeria. We have a joint venture taking dairy product from Ireland and, and taking it out into a customer, consumer branded dairy proposition across all strata of the market in Af Africa's most populous country. This thing will need to be spoken to shortly. Uh, and duck if I throw it into the audience. Uh, in terms of processing in broad terms, we're doing 5.8 billion litres of milk globally, which is more than Ireland's combined milk quota today. Uh, obviously, the bulk of that split between Ireland and the US, and our, then our mozzarella cheese business in the UK, uh, Northern Ireland, and Wales. That's yielding 477,000 tonnes of cheese and 260,000 tonnes of dairy-based ingredients and whey has been a particular interest, uh, particularly in, re in regard to global nutritionals. So I'm going to focus down and drill down through US cheese and global nutritionals into sports nutrition. Uh, in the US, it's about scale, uh, and I suppose the only comment I would make of the 380,000 tonnes of cheese being produced in the US now, uh, an increasing amount of that will be exported and we have to recognize that the US industry is going to be an export player uh, and will compete in many ways in global markets, but it allows us also as a, as a key manufacturer in Ireland to have a global uh, supply solution from Ireland and the US. Ingredients Technologies was split off from the cheese business and this is an organizational point that's not unimportant in order to force the team to bring value to whey and to drive innovation. It's transfer priced into that business and their objective is to go out and work with customers, find solutions for them, drive value, and therefore smooth out the commodity price curves as we go as best we can. And therefore science-led solutions have become critical to that and the development of two innovation centers as well as strong marketing input. Premix is vitamin and mineral blending of which we are number three in the world after DSM and Fortitech, a US uh, multinational. And that has also driven a lot of learnings on fortification technology, the use of a wide range of micronutrients, and that has also supported the development of performance nutrition, which in the first step was an old-fashioned vertical integration. We bought a customer of the ingredient technologies business, but we'd be, we would proudly say that because of the innovation we were bringing to customers, we lost no customer when we did that vertical integration, particularly in the US, and that's something we've been, we've been quite proud of. So that's the business model, and the point of putting this slide up is that we took a captive whey pool, split off a commercial entity and a, a, an innovation and in R&D entity to drive value add there on a standalone basis, uh, and then out of that we did a vertical integration into performance nutrition, and customized premix solution was an acquisition to bring in further capability in adding to the nutritional value of foods for our customers. And in that business as well, we also sell integrity. We take out complexity with 30, up to 30 micronutrients in some mixes, but it must be precisely and absolutely correct. So I say to the people in that business, the one key thing we sell, apart from turnaround and, and, and response times, is integrity. Integrity of the performance of the mix and the content. And then performance nutrition being uh, an integration uh, on a vertical basis that has brought us a lot of new learnings, a lot of new exposures. So performance nutrition, what is it? Um, it probably started in the 30s on Muscle Beach in California. And if many of you go back there today on Venice Beach, you will still see outdoor gyms. Uh, and I'm sure there are many of you who have used them. Uh, and then a guy called Joe Weeder in the early 40s wrote a book on my physique when he was in his late teens. And Joe Weeder then developed a whole business of equipment, uh, food products, and so on. It was probably accelerated in the 40s when dried products were developed for the American military in the Second World War, powdered egg, uh, soya pro powders, and then it became glamorized a bit in the 70s with Arnold Schwarzenegger and others, and then it began to catch a wave of a general interest in health and fitness. 
in people wanting to look well as be fit. And it further, I'm not uh, going to do all of the detail on this, and it further captured probably the internet wave, which enabled people to talk about products on boards, on websites, and that accelerated adoption of people who were personalizing protein usage to training regimes, fitness, exercise, and diet. And we got into this business in a small way in 2005 with a small acquisition in the UK and had the sense to follow that. So we would categorize this market today in the US at retail terms at about $3 billion and globally at about $4.5 billion. It's mainly powders in the US. Beverages are growing as a delivery system and one of the challenges is delivering, is delivering stable protein-based beverage systems into this market uh, and that's something we spend quite a bit of time uh, working on in terms of innovation and development. The other key thing is it's uh, normalizing. The traditional market was the guy at the top. I don't see too many here, possible exception of Jack Kennedy, uh, but um, uh, it is spread out now into power sports, endurance sports, vanity, People wanted to look well, and if you're a bit like myself, the weekend warrior on, on the right. And the reality of this is that it's driven differently in different markets uh, across all those. In the Middle East, we find it is more about look rather than people wanting to be fit. Uh, endurance sports growing, and also the use of protein in recovery, gaining increased uh, usage. And all of this was helped before Christmas by the Olympic a committee endorsing protein supplementation uh, for athletes in training. And uh, today we're, uh, uh, you know, here in the RDS, we are powering Leinster Rugby, Ulster Rugby, Tipperary Hurling, if I might say it, uh, and our first order from the All Blacks last week. So we got into this business in terms of, first of all, identifying a trend in health and wellness. We spent a lot of time selling a number of businesses in the Glanby organization to get money to invest in this space. Began by buying a very small business in the UK, which was a formulator. And in the formulation business, we got a lot of skills and R&D capability that we learned a lot more and coupled that with our ingredient and ingredient development capability. And that brought forward the innovation uh, quite strongly. And that allowed us to learn the industry, both as a supplier until we made a much bigger step and then bought a branded business called Optimum Nutrition in 2008, which was the leading brand at that time in the US. And since then, we have developed that brand very significantly and added to it in January of this year with the acquisition of BSN, which is a separate uh, but complementary branded business. So these are three brands. Optimum's essence is only the best so it's the best tasting, best quality. Um, BSN is edgier. It's got more attitude to it. It's about helping you to finish first. And it's about winning. And then ABB, American Bodybuilding, which is mainly in a drinks format for gyms, talks about convenience and being able to maximize your performance every day. So ready to drink beverages. Uh, and then there's a cut over here as well with uh, a number of energy-based products as well that sit into the portfolio. But each have a distinctive appeal. All of these are supported by getting close on double digit as a percentage of revenue spend on marketing and product development, which is where it needs to be to keep these energized. It's about news, it's about the, the Facebook generation, and in particular, they're loyal users where it's part of lifestyle, talk to each other continually over the web. And therefore, you have to be able to use that effectively to communicate products, to communicate development, to have news. So it's built around, uh, we have two key mega brands, um, Gold Whey, 100% uh, gold standard Whey, which is the best-selling protein supplement in the US today. Uh, and if you look at specialized retailers online, such as Amazon, or there's a specialist retailer called Bodybuilding.com, owned by Liberty Media, uh, we own six of the top ten selling brands uh, on that website today. And then NO Explode is an energy-based product, uh, workout booster, 
and is the, the brand leader in its category in the US. We have the top three brands in this segment in 20 countries and we have rolled out sales and distribution to 110 countries. Uh, the brands are now present in markets as diverse as Russia, Lebanon, Jordan, India, uh, pushing into China, Korea, Indonesia, Australia, uh, and just last week opening up uh, an operation in Brazil. Innovation is key, it's brand-led, it has dairy roots, and therefore customer insight, supply chain insight, where people buy, why they buy, how they use it, how they talk to each other, how they get reference, all crucial that the business captures that, and then we deliver in a range of formats. And a couple of the most recent innovations have been a hydro builder, which is a hydrolyzed range of protein built largely on 90% whey protein isolate, uh, produced in Glanbia plants uh, with some other additions and then going out in delivery systems in powders, in taste bars, uh, capsules and tablets and we have capability to make across all those. The other thing here we're selling is convenience. If some of you are old enough to remember the first Rocky films where Sylvester Stallone got up in the morning when he's training and rhythmically cracks five eggs into a glass and drinks it down. There's about five grams of protein in each egg. We can deliver the same with a nice chocolate or strawberry flavor from one scoop. It's much simpler. Uh, amino acids uh, as the building blocks of protein. We've just launched the world's first effervescent instantized amino acid product. Uh, 10 milligrams of micronized amino acids per serving. It's stimulant-free, can be used any time, uh, and that's gaining great traction in key markets launched in the last month. Uh, so after three years of expansion, acquisition-led, built on learnings and insight from hiving off a whey business, and getting the management to focus on the customers and say, what do we need to do to add value to their output, and then doing a vertical integration. So we have an integrated global manufacturing platform in specialist adult nutrition, sports, long-term partnerships with market-leading customers, and the brand equity we think can be built and sustained on a global basis. Uh, we support it with two innovation centers, uh, one in the US and one in Ireland in Kilkenny. The US, we have morphed on a bit more now to be a customer collaboration center where we bring in and have physically restructured the building where we can bring in the scientists and technologists from customers to work alongside our own people to accelerate the development of product, new products or adaptations of existing products or development of existing products for other markets. And the regulatory piece is a challenge in that regard. When we bought Optum, we had to adopt all the products for the, for the European market, adapt them all. It took us about a year's work uh, to do that. So in terms of some of the ingredients areas we would be looking at would be purified proteins, peptides, profiling through chromatography, electrophoresis. You know, it's interesting one of the, the personalized adult nutrition will ultimately move on and link up with the science of genomics and lots of interesting work done, being done in, in UC Davis in California about the application of genomics and gene typing into specific food types for specific conditions. So that's all part of the learning that we, a humble dairy company, have got out of this. Applications research, we have capability now across bars, beverages, and uh, across all in between, including tablets and capsules. And we do quite a bit of work on, uh, with a number of institutions on muscle physiology, bone health, uh, and immune health. And then trying to be much better, and we're not good enough yet, at how we manage IP and how we control and manage the results of what we're producing effectively. And recognizing what's worth protecting and what isn't worth protecting. Because if you're going to protect it, you have to be prepared to defend it. So in summary, I hope that that gives you a bit of an insight into an acquisition-led piece that has taken us into a specialist adult nutrition zone. It has then driven right back the dairy chain, our focus on research, development, particularly around protein chemistry and protein science. 
Uh, it has challenged us to up our capability and invest more in people, technology and resources. We believe it will also support uh, elements of the longer term expansion of dairy in particular application settings. And I present it to you as some useful bit of learning uh, on our journey. Thanks very much.